friends, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So when the first disciples came to Jesus and they wanted to know if they could sit at his right and his left in his glory, they had no comprehension that God, our God, the God we see in Jesus, is not one who ever sits back in glory. Our God is one who kneels in service. How can you sit at the right-hand side or the left-hand side of a lazy God who just basks in the sunlight when the Lord is on the road looking for new life to open up to the sight of wonder and joy? Can you hear Jesus laughing when they say, Lord, we want you to promise to do whatever we ask of you. Oh yeah? What do you want? We want to be powerful. We want accolades. We want a gold star on our lives that says we did better than our neighbors. We want our sisters and brothers to finally realize that we're the kids who made it in the family. We want to sit on the right hand and the left hand of power and share it. We want our faces on the backsides of coins. We want our names on buildings. Lord Jesus, we see that people are going to love you. They're going to build a church to be your body on earth. And we want to be the saints crowned in glory. Oh, oh my people. Do you know what the church is going to be filled with? Little buckets of water. Do you know what the church is going to be filled with? A cup set on a table for whomever walks through the door. Are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I have? Are you able to drink from the cup that I've got? Because the life that I'm in is one where we wash up this world and feed the hunger and slake the thirst. The seat that I have is not a throne in heaven standing above you, pointing out what you've done good and what you've done wrong as if I have nothing better to do than keep score. No, the throne that I have is in the dust in front of your life. Look down at your feet. Look at where you've been. What roads have you been walking, looking for those seats of glory? What paths have you been taking, trying to find the accolades that you ask in a cheap prayer? The dust in front of you, the dust on your feet, that's where I kneel down to wash you. That's what I'm here for. That emptiness in your belly that you'd like to fill with someone else's approval, that's what I come to fill with love for your life, with my body and blood broken and poured out so that your body can have no brokenness. People of God, all over the world, you have seen temples built and religions established trying to put God on a pedestal where we climb up and say, I've got a little bit of it too. Don't be like that. Don't be like the rulers of the nations who lured it over them. Don't be like the power structures of this world that prey on your most tender insecurities, trying to change you into their image. Any God worth loving, 
any God worth worshiping, any God worthy of an hour out of your Sunday morning, is not the mean tyrant who stands over you like a child deciding whether or not an ant gets to live. But the culmination of our human story, the Son of Man, God with us, is the story of one who came not to be served, not to be patted and petted and kept in a gilded cage, not to be honored with a lazy throne. The story of our God in Christ Jesus is the love that comes to serve. Do you want a spot on the right hand and the left hand of love? That can be granted. Not on a throne, but next to that water where you take the baptism that you received in Jesus Christ, where you take the grace and the love that God has poured on you, and you carry that water in buckets or in bottles or in pockets or in your hands, and you race out into the world saying, this promise is not for me to be better than my neighbor, but for all people to be one. Throw that water on the world. Stand next to Jesus Christ in making the promises that we will wash and tend to each other's needs, that we will wipe away the dust of those paths that have led us in the direction of someone else's definition of glory. Do you want a spot at your Savior's side? Come take it at the cup he pours with his blood for the forgiveness of sin. The way he has fed you and filled you and nourished you to live by grace. Stand next to that grace and shout with your loudest voice that any free gift we have been blessed to receive is the same free gift owned by every other sister and brother and daughter and son on this earth. Because people are crying out. They sit there blinded to what our God truly is, to who our God truly is. People are still crying out, Son of David, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And what they need is not the promise of a barca lounger in heaven. What they need here and now is that holy game of peekaboo. Will you look at the people around you and smile with the smile that Christ Jesus our Lord has served us? Will you help them open their senses their eyes and their ears, their hearts and their hands to the joy that is in front of us when God says, I'm not here to take from you, I'm here to give to you. I'm here to give for you. I am for you. Because that's where he finds us. Walking on the road looking for a spot at his side. As our eyes open, as our hearts expand, as we see what it is in this God, we truly will love because we have been served first with love. Then let's join Timaeus and follow him and give away freely the service that he has called to be our way of life when our God looked at us in worship on a Sunday morning and said, but don't you know my heart worships you? Amen.